Howdy, and uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, take a look at my channel. I just started this one up. My name's Seth. Um, <clears throat> I've got some plans. Um, I'll let you know about those. First off, about me. Um, been in the Navy 14 years. Uh, considerable amount of time on the water, you could say. Um, but this past year, I finally got the opportunity to uh, spend the time to become the bass fisherman that I wanted to become. And to put the time on the water. To be exact, uh, going off my sonar, I've logged about 350 hours between July, or actually in the May to October 31st. Um, a lot of time on the water, uh, a lot of casting, a lot of fun, a lot of good fish. Um, the other day I was going to crash out on my couch and I just wanted to watch a YouTube video of someone fishing for an extended period of time and that doesn't exist. So my ultimate goal here is I'm going to videotape what a real fishing trip looks like, not what you see on television uh, with the guys going out and they find a school and they hammer them and they use really quick fast tactics to, to knock them out and get ridiculous and uh, they edit it down to make it look like they just slammed them left and right. You know, does it happen? Yeah, it happened to me a couple times this year. Is that always what happens? No. And that's not how it is. Um, I know there's a lot of people who want to go fishing, and they can't. Maybe maybe they just want to watch somebody else fish. So I'm gonna put that as well, out as well, and uh, hopefully someone enjoys it. I uh, figured if I'm spending this much time and not documenting any of it, uh, I'm wasting everyone's time. So um, tonight I'm gonna to put together a couple videos of uh, one of my boat, my tackle, some sonar and uh, how I fish, where I fish, and why. Right now I'm in Connecticut. Uh, it's, uh, originally I'm from Texas. I've got a lot of catfishing experience. Unfortunately I didn't have uh, access to a boat or lakes that had bass in them when I was younger so bass fishing was always just kind of a pipe dream, something that we uh, talked smack about in uh, school. You know, I caught one and he caught this one. Yeah all nonsense but uh, this year I actually got out and did it and um, caught a couple of uh, what Connecticut would consider trophy fish I had a great time doing it and I learned a lot from the people I took fishing with me and I learned a lot from the locals um, but I mostly learned from uh, trial and error and trying things that were unconventional in the state um, You'll see a lot of uh, you'll see a lot of people out there with uh, sixty, seventy thousand dollar fishing boats, uh, probably ten grand in rods and reels, and just as much in lures, accessories, sonars. Uh, well, I met a guy this summer who had probably uh, eight eight grand easy in sonar, and it was all wired incorrectly, and it didn't work. And I spent some time with him at the boat at the boat dock explaining what he needed to do and, and uh, he felt that he just hadn't bought enough gear uh, I've got one small sonar unit uh, it works it works exceptionally well uh, but like a lot of things it's just the tool it's like your lures are a tool the boat is a tool your fishing, your fishing line your fishing rods, your reels, your trolling motor, it's all a tool when it comes down to uh, whether you're going to catch fish or not, that's up to you. Uh, how are you going to do it? Why are you going to do it? And are you going to do it safely? Um, so, my kind of rules is, uh, or my rules on my boat is, uh, we're, we're not going to do it unless it's safe. I've got a low draft. Uh, a little bit about the boat, it's a 1992 Bass Tracker panfish so I don't have a steering column 
I have a front seat with a tiller bar on my left and my throttle on my right. I get made fun of for being in this boat, but I tell you right now, I put more blood on the deck on the decks than most uh, most fishing boats you'll see around. That's fine with me. Uh, I don't get embarrassed easily, and uh, you shouldn't either, ever. Uh, one of the things about fishing that bothers me the most is. Uh, it turns into a flash competition. Who's, who's got the, the newest and fanciest gear? Do I have some newer gear and some fancy gear? Yes, but I'm not showing it off. I use it as a tool. It's like a shovel digs you a hole. This equipment catches you fish if you use it properly. <laughs> there are wrong ways to use the shovel. So, uh, being in Connecticut, um, a lot of shallow water fishing. Eventually, I will get some video of some deeper water fishing. Um, unfortunately, that's on the other side of the state. I will also not hesitate to take my boat out into the ocean, depending on weather conditions. Gotta have a radio. Um, gotta know what's going on. Anyways, um, this year has been uh, a little bit different than normal. Uh, well, at least my last two years here. This year has had a warm winter. It's uh, day after Christmas, and it was 56 degrees outside. Usually the lakes would be um, frozen by now. They're not. So it's given us a, a rare opportunity to try to catch these fish in a... Uh, An environment that's new to the fish and ourselves so uh, you get to uh, I'm trying all sorts of new stuff uh, everyone else is using Texas rigs that's fine use your Texas rigs they work in the world of rigs people consider them the best myself I do not uh, because I don't go for quantity I go for the largest fish uh, sports fishermen um, you know take what you need kind of mentality so I occasionally if I can, if I'm catching a lot of uh, you know 15 inch fish I might keep three or four uh, fillet them you know, and cook them up for some buddies I have no problem doing that uh, bass can be delicious actually in my opinion they're one of my, one of my favorite fish uh, right next to catfish I'm a huge catfish fan um, do need to elaborate a little bit on what I plan on doing, my plans. I'm going to get some more winter fishing in. I'm going to videotape it. It'll be long. It'll be the entire trip. I'm not going to edit it down. From the moment I leave the boat dock to the time I get back. Um, then in the spring, I'm going to do a little bit of spring fishing. Um, I don't fish the shallows in the spring. Not the, not the breeding areas. Everyone else does and they go in and they say, oh, I caught all these fish okay that's amazing you caught fish when they won't leave their nest unnecessarily disturb them um, I think that's worse personally than catch than not doing catch and release they're huge on catch and release in the state you know gotta catch gotta release gotta always let them go never eat them never do this I say um, I fished uh, the kind of um, right where the vegetation ended going to the deeper water during the spawn and I caught several large fish uh, the females they don't stay in the nest when they lay their eggs they they continue on so females also tend to get bigger and you get them and you have a good time so plan is to uh, go out do a lot of fishing uh, explain what I'm doing I'm not going to talk a lot while I'm fishing uh, I'll have some videos explaining my lures and hooks and knots and knots are especially important here uh, retying your line 
a lot of pickerel, a lot of pike. Uh, I will catch them. I let those guys go. Uh, they're natural, native, important in the environment, and I don't like the way they taste. So, um, a lot of people treat them like trash fish. I don't know why. Uh, so the plan is, like I said before, I'm going to make a lot of videos. Uh, I'm not going to get crazy. Uh, I'm not going to do anything uh, too insane. Um, but I'm going to let you go fishing with me. And I'm going to show you how I catch them. I don't keep anything secret. Never have. The, the other day I caught a 5.8 ounce bass right which is that's a huge bass for Connecticut especially the day before Christmas so you know I put him on the uh, local fishing page and everyone freaked out you know um, you know how did you catch him how did you catch him and I actually posted what what my what my plan what I did and I'll, I'll tell you what I did right now um, I had this guy it's a rebel crawfish uh, Dives pretty deep. It'll actually get down to about 10 feet if you if you pull it hard enough. Um, you can see his hook's a little bent from that fish. He put up a decent fight. He pulled some drag, and I had the drag set tight. Um, but what I was doing was fish are obviously going to be where the bait fish are. Uh, I was marking bait fish in the vegetation, so I casted it down. Got it deep in the vegetation to the point I was pulling weeds, and boom, fish. Got him. Only bass I caught that day, but he's huge, at least for this area. And uh, people were surprised. They were like, why did, you, why did you put that information out? Uh, everybody keeps everything secret here. Well, there's, there's definitely, there was bigger fish there, and there was a different technique to catch the bigger fish. I don't know that technique yet, but I'm going to find it out eventually. I'll learn it. I'll figure it out. You may read about it, hear about it, watch about it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to let you know what I do and how I catch them. So uh, obviously I didn't plan this out very well as far as uh, narrating, and uh, I'm not planning on doing that. So I don't know. If you like it, you hang around, and uh, I'm going to keep posting videos. So. I think the next one I'll do, uh, talk about the lures I use this year, and maybe some of the soft baits. Okay, have a good one.